Factor investing. That phrase seems to be popping up quite a bit lately. The truth is, factor investing has been going on for decades, but only now is it having its moment in the spotlight. That's why a lot of new players are suddenly trying to adopt factor investing as their strategy. But at Gerstein Fisher, we've been pioneering and refining factor investing for over 20 years. We're among the first firms ever to take factor investing out of the theoretical world and apply those theories in the real world. The approach we use is called multi-factor investing. Multi-factor investing is a systematic, rules-based approach. It acknowledges that risk and return should be related, but not all risks are rewarded equally. Certain parts of the financial markets reward investors more than others. For example, value securities, small companies, high momentum securities, profitable securities, and securities with low capital expenditures have consistently earned better returns than other parts of the market. How did factor investing begin? Before the 1970s, conventional wisdom around investing tended to revolve around stock picking. Even the more analytical firms tended to look at companies from the outside, predicting how a security would perform in the future, instead of applying the scientific method using empirical observation and analysis. They also relied on theories that we now know to be flawed, like the capital asset pricing model, a single factor model that broadly assumed that the only risk was the market risk. Other theories assumed that the market was perfectly efficient, or that investors behaved in a way that was perfectly rational. These theories were flawed because of an overall lack of data, lack of inquiry, and computing power much more limited than it is today. Before the internet and the PC, even the best financial theories were based on an extremely small sample size of information. It's no coincidence that the rise of the personal computer and the globalization of the world coincides with the rise and application of factor investing. In 1972, when a personal computer was the size of a laboratory, two professors named Robert Haugen and James Hines began refining CAPM. Their work posited that low-risk stocks actually produced higher returns than expected. This was the birth of low-volatility investing. It turned the old model upside down, and it was one of the first building blocks of factor investing. Four years later, in 1976, an economist named Stephen Ross contributed yet another building block when he pioneered the arbitrage pricing theory. With more data beginning to stream in, multiple theorists were beginning to see what lay beneath the surface of a security, exposure to the various investment factors that drove its returns. This is the heart of factor investing. The idea that an investment portfolio can be created and diversified based on the DNA that lies inside securities instead of the securities themselves. The dawn of the digital age rapidly increased the flow of available data and further accelerated landmark studies about factor investing. In 1992, Eugene Fama and Kenneth French expanded on the rational market theory and showed that riskier securities, such as small companies and value securities, had outperformed the alternative larger companies and growth securities. But then, just a year later, a new factor emerged, and with it, an entirely new way of thinking about investing. In 1993, Sheridan Titman and Narasim Hamjagadish demonstrated that a company's performance yesterday can tell us a lot about its performance tomorrow. This marked the birth of a new factor, momentum. Here was the breakthrough. Instead of looking inside a security at its risk exposures, they looked outside at the behavior of its investors. They understood that realized returns contained a component related to expected returns. In other words, a stock's price today is affected by what investors believe it could be tomorrow. And what I think it will be tomorrow is influenced by what I believed yesterday. This theory is known as behavioral finance, and it's a significant reason why we at Gerstein Fisher believe in a multi-factor strategy. Because to see the entire investment picture, we need to see the entire equation, outside as well as inside, growth as well as value, Fama and French, as well as Jagadish and Titman. They may seem to contradict each other, but at Gerstein Fisher, we believe that they complement each other. Behavioral finance is still relatively new, but it also draws upon Keynesian principles that are nearly 100 years old. To best determine the price of a security today, 
we must 1. Determine what the market thinks the price will be in the future. 2. Discount the market's feelings about the risk that exists. And 3. Take into account other people's opinions about 1 and 2. We believe that all three factors must be combined to best determine the securities price. As the millennium turned, a bona fide body of work about factor investing had emerged within financial circles, but it had not yet taken flight with the general public. Why? We believe that, quite simply, the idea of factor investing flew in the face of investment practices that had been the foundation of leading financial firms for decades. For these leading investors to admit that factor investing might be a superior way of thinking would represent nothing less than a revocation of everything their firms were built on. But then came the financial crisis of 2008. Many books have been written about the true genesis of the crisis, but at its core, we learned a great deal about how risk was priced. We learned how important transparency truly is, and we learned just how human investors really are. This event marked a significant milestone in the shift towards factor-based thinking. We believe that some of the most significant work in this shift, from asset-based thinking to factor-based thinking, is being done at our firm, Gerstein Fisher. We work with the next generation of innovative thinkers, while continuing to partner with financial pioneers and icons. Today, we represent the epicenter of the factor investment world. By partnering with leading academic researchers around the world, we ground our factor-based strategies in what we believe to be the best information available anywhere in the world. Factor investing may be new to some, but it has been the bedrock of what we have been doing at Gerstein Fisher for over 20 years. Once you look at your money through a factor-based lens, you'll never look back again. <laughs>